Hi, everyone. My name is Daniel Todd, and I would like to show you how we've demonstrated domain randomization for the first time in medical imaging. And this was a collaborative work between Siemens and uh, King's. So what you see here is our network from last IPCAI, actually, that is able to register cardiac model to an interventional cardiac X-ray image. Um, and this happens in a way that the clinicians acquire the X-ray image, then a segmented prior model from MR or CT data is taken and projected out into the same plane as the X-ray image was taken in. Uh, then these two images are shown to a neural network that predicts the next action, and this happens in an iterative fashion. So if you iterate a few times, then you can see on the right, the mesh or the model will be moving closer and closer to the final uh, ideal alignment. However, there is a problem here. It seems to be working in most of the cases. However, if you look at the images, uh, our x-rays that we apply, our agromon, look quite different uh, compared to the training data that we've used. We've trained fully on synthetic images, right, and those are real x-rays. So uh, in the results, there will be obviously some, some difference if you train fully on real data or fully on synthetic, and this is what we call the reality gap, right? So how can we bridge this? The natural way would be to try to simulate more realistic images. However, we chose a different approach, and this is domain randomization, right? So. In the first step, we have uh, randomized the intensity of our generated DR images. You can see here, so we are generating unrealistic uh, X-ray images. And then in the second step, we have um, randomized for the collimation. So we are generating random borders, as you can see there, with random colors, so sometimes white, gray, or black. Um, and through the, the domain randomization, what we hope to achieve and we have achieved is that the, the real X-rays appear to the network just as another variation of the data. So as you can see here in the top row, these were our previous results in some cases, and domain randomization seemed to have uh, helped in these particular ones. And if you look at the quantitative results, uh, what you see on the left, these are results on individual patients, so 21 patients from uh, two uh, train networks with our initial setup without domain randomization. And as you can see, we varied one uh, parameter here. That was the initialization of the weights at the beginning of the training, and we received completely different results if we were looking at the, the uh, robustness of this registration for the individual cases. However, when we perform the domain randomization, we can see that it has worked in these cases and the robustness improved significantly, but that's just one thing. The other thing is that we receive consistent results for different training parameters, so we have kind of managed to bridge the reality gap. Thank you.